Hey guys, Chubbs here, back again with another ACS scripting tutorial. And this is going to be a rather simple tutorial for the most part. We aren't going to be doing anything uh, all that advanced or complex, but this is something people have been asking about over the years, and I've never made a video covering this specific topic, so I figured I might as well go ahead and do this, and anytime someone asks about it in the future, I can just refer them to this video. So, what people have been asking about uh, over the years is, how to make it so that when you clear a room of enemies or uh, kill all the enemies in a certain area, something happens, like a door opens or maybe a certain platform lowers or something like that. So before we get into this, I'm going to first show you this little map that I've set up. So you can see it has sort of a marble theme. We have the player starting here in this short little hallway, and he enters this large central area where I have a super shotgun and some shells. And then off in the corner here in these fiery areas, we have uh, two hell knights and two pinkies. And we also have a door. So uh, the goal here, of course, is going to be to make it so that the player has to kill both hell knights and both pinkies in order for this door to open. And I've not finished this map. This is just a little bitty tutorial map. So when the door opens, it just leads into this sort of blood room. And that's really where it ends. But uh, we're going to focus on how to make it so that when you clear a room of, of enemies, something happens. And in this case, that will be the door opening. So there are several ways to do this. It's not like there's just one certain way. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you two methods that you can use. And there's one method that I think is better. Uh, I'm going to save it for, for last. Uh, and both methods will work, but I think the second one I'm going to show you is going to be more efficient. So the first method is what I call the variable counter method. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the script editor window, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And this method's really simple. So all we're going to do is we're going to make it so that whenever we kill an enemy, a certain variable increases like a it's basically going to be a counter variable an integer and when we kill an enemy we're just going to add one to that counter and then we're going to check that counter against a, a certain number and that'll be the total number of enemies and if it's greater than or equal to that then we will perform the action that we want so in in the case of this map it would be opening that door that i showed you so let's go ahead and just write this script and it'll become more clear as we go uh, what exactly is happening here. So I'll start off with the uh, number sign or the pound sign, include, space, and then zcommon.acs inside quotations. And then we're going to go down and I'm going to actually just create two variables here. The first variable is going to be a variable that basically stores the total number of enemies uh, at the start of the map. So this is not going to be like a, an updated count or anything. It's just going to be a, a total that we're wanting to check against. So I'm going to go ahead and create an integer. And I'm going to call this uh, total enemies. I could have also called it like enemy count or something like that. And then I'm going to make it equal to four because as I showed you there we have two hell knights and two pinkies so the total number of enemies that we need to kill is four. Next I'm going to create another integer and I'm just going to call this kill count and I'm not I'm not going to make it equal to anything and if you don't make it equal to something an integer will start at zero by default. So what I want to happen is every time we kill an enemy kill count increases by one and then when it increases, I want to check it against this variable here to see if it's greater than or equal to 4. If it is, then we'll open the door. If it's not, then we won't do anything. So we have the two variables there. Now we just need to write the script that actually handles that logic that I just described. So I'm going to go ahead and go down. I'm going to type script. And I'm going to make this a named script. So I'm just going to type quotations. And then inside the quotations, I'm going to call this script, uh, I'll just call it enemy killed because we're going to be executing this anytime we kill an enemy. And it'll be void and we're not going to be sending it any information. And then this is going to be really simple. So this script is going to run whenever we kill an enemy. So in that case, what we want to do is take the kill count variable and add one to it. 
We can do that by doing kill count equals kill count plus one. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it, which is the way that I actually prefer, is to just say kill count plus plus. That basically does the same thing. It just takes whatever kill count is and it adds one to it. So after we increase the kill count, we of course want to check whether or not it's greater than or equal to this total that we set. So I'm just going to say if kill count is greater than or equal to the total number of enemies, then we want to perform our special actions. And for this specific map, it's just going to be opening that door. So I'm just going to say door underscore open. And I've gone ahead of time. I meant to show you this. And I have given that door a tag of one. So that's already set up. So let me pull up the script editor again. So for door open, we're going to say the tag is one. We're going to open it with a, a speed of 32. I think that's about default. And we're not going to use light tag, so I'm just going to keep that at zero. And then we'll put a semicolon, and that should be all we have to do. So to just sort of go back over this again, when this script runs, in other words, whenever we kill an enemy, we're going to increase kill count, and then we're going to check if it's greater than or equal to that total up there, which is four. If it is, that door is going to open. If it's not, then nothing's going to happen. Kill count's going to increase, but we're not going to be taking any actions. So let's go ahead and compile. And we're just about finished, but we can't test the map yet because we've written this script, but we've not assigned it to any of the enemies. So let's go ahead. And I'm going to select both Hill Knights and both Pinkies. I'm going to pull up their uh, properties. I'm going to go here to the Action tab, and I'm going to give them an action of 226, Script Execute Always. This is, uh, script execute always is the one that you should be using instead of plain old script execute if you're dealing with death events like this. And I made a video talking about the differences between those. Uh, it's one of my previous ACS scripting tutorials, so uh, I might put a link to that in the video description if you don't know about the differences between those. But yeah, anytime you're dealing with monster death events, uh, make sure you use this instead of plain old script execute. But now that we've given uh, all four of those monsters this action, I'm going to say that it's a named script, and we're going to choose our enemy killed script, and we're ready to go. So all four of these enemies are now set up so that when they are killed, they will execute the enemy killed script. And we've already gone over the logic there. It's going to increase the kill count, check whether it's greater than or equal to the total, and if it is, it's going to open the door. So. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and uh, play the map real quick and just make sure it works. All right, so that is method number one. You could see that when we killed all four of the enemies, that door opened up right away, and we were able to go through. So that is the first method. And as I said at the start of the video, I'm going to show you two methods today. That's the one that's the least efficient, in my opinion. It works just fine, as you could see, but it's not very efficient. And I'm going to explain why as we get into the second method. So uh, first, let me sort of undo what we have done for this method. So I'm going to go to the, those four monsters again. I'm going to take away their action. Click OK. I'm also going to go to the script editor. And I'm going to keep the include line, but I'm going to remove everything else. OK. So the second method that I'm going to show you here is going to be uh, quite simple as well, but it's going to sort of take a different approach. So instead of using a kill counter, what we're going to be doing is using a while loop. So we're essentially just going to be having this loop that is checking whether or not all of the enemies with a certain tag are alive or not. And if enemies with that tag do exist, then it's going to say wait. And it's just going to keep looping over and over and over again. And so it's 
it's going to continue waiting until those enemies do not exist and then it's going to perform a certain action so let's go ahead and just write the script and as we write it i think it'll become a little more clear so let's go ahead and write the script i'll start with the word script and instead of calling this enemy killed i'm going to uh, name it something different so since this is a while loop that's going to be checking uh, certain enemies i'm going to call this enemy death monitor to sort of better describe what it's going to be doing what i'm also going to do is instead of making this like a a void script that we would have to uh, call ourselves whenever something happened i'm going to make this an inner script and so that way this is going to be a script that's just going to kick in right as soon as we enter the map or right as soon as we play the map and so it'll it'll uh, just be executed right away without us having to explicitly execute it by using a switch or uh, something like that so now that we have our script here let's go ahead and put that logic in and i'll try and explain it as best i can as we go through it and then when we get to the end i'll also give a breakdown to make it more clear so let's go ahead and write while and here's where it gets a little interesting we're going to do thing count and here you have to put in a type and an id and this is going to count a this is basically going to give, give you a count of how many things with a certain id exist so for the type i'm not going to worry about that i don't care about the type i just care about the id so i'm going to put zero for the type but the thing id i do care about so right now our monsters don't have an id so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to select all four of our monsters and i'm going to give them a tag or an id of 666 you can give them any unused tag but uh, just to be silly i'm going to give them a tag of 666 because that's a an evil tag and easy to remember so let's go back to this uh, script that we we're writing so for the id that we're checking we're going to say 666 so like i was just saying thing count is going to give us a count and now that now that we have put 666 as the tag it's basically going to give us a count of how many things with a tag of 666 exist so i'm going to say while at least one of these exists so in other words while the count that it's returning is greater than zero we just want to wait and i'm going to do a just a one tick delay and i'll explain the logic behind this as we go and so when that condition is no longer met and we're no longer waiting in other words when everything has been killed we're going to go ahead and open the door so we'll do the same code for the door i'll just do door underscore open tag of one uh, a speed of 32 and then we're not going to use the light tag so now that we've written this script let me go back over it in, in more detail and break it down a little bit further so this script's going to run as soon as we enter the map and what it's going to do is it's going to check whether or not any things with a tag of 666 exist and that's what this greater than uh, zero is doing it's getting the count of 666 tagged monsters and it's checking whether that's greater than zero now if it is in other words if there's at least one monster still alive with that tag then it's just going to wait and then that's going to be a loop that constantly runs so while at least one of those monsters still exists the script is sort of going to be stuck here at what i just highlighted that's what that's going to accomplish it's it's almost like it's going to create a gate here it's just going to be stuck in this constant loop and then when we have killed all of those monsters with a tag of 666 this line is no longer no longer going to be true and so the while loop is going to terminate and only then will we reach this line this door open code so to be clear while uh while our monsters are alive we're just going to be waiting and the code from here down is only going to be executed when this while loop terminates in other words when this is not true when we've killed all the monsters so i hope that's clear to you i hope you understand it. if you have any questions about it if you still don't get it feel free and ask in the comment section but hopefully that made it clear but that should be all we have to do as far as writing the script 
And uh, I, I was also going to say we need to tag the monsters, but I already gave them all the tag of 666 while I was uh, writing that script. So we've already taken care of that. That is the one step you want to make sure you do. Uh, any monsters that are included in this check, you want to make sure they have that 666 tag. So I believe that is everything. So let's go ahead and uh, run the map, test it, and let's make sure that this second method works the way it's supposed to. All right, there we go. So that was the second method. And as you can see, just like the first method, it also worked. When we killed all four of those monsters, the door opened right away for us. So uh, to explain why I prefer this method over the first one that I showed you with the kill counter, uh, first of all, you don't have to worry about creating any variables. Second of all, with the kill counter, remember that we had to go in and type the uh, specific number of monsters that is uh, very inflexible like if we were to go in and add another monster uh, like another hell knight or another pinky and we wanted it to be included then we would have to remember to go to the script and increase that number if we didn't then it wouldn't behave the way we expected with this though really all we have to do is just remember that anything that we add uh, we give the 666 tag and that's it the script is still going to be run the way it's supposed to and uh, to prove that let me go ahead I'm just gonna run one more quick test I'm going to just throw in another enemy here I guess I'll just tuck another pinky back here in this corner give it a tag of 666 uh, actually I don't want you guys to sit here and wait for me to kill these hell knights because they're that they're sort of bullet sponges so let me turn those hell knights into pinkies and that way it'll be a shorter demonstration actually I'll turn them into imps so we'll have two imps, two pinkies, and another pinky here. So I've made some changes, and I have, uh, let me make sure they're tagged correctly. Yep, I've made sure they have the tag, but the good thing is we don't have to change this script at all. With the first method, you would always have to remember to go in and change the script, but with this method, you don't, and it's still going to work. So to prove it, let's go ahead and run the map again. And let's just make sure that it still works, even with this new enemy that I've added and the new changes I've made. All right, so as you can see, that still worked just fine. We didn't have to go in and modify the script. All you have to do with this method is just remember that any ad enemy, uh, any new enemies that you add, you give that 666 tag. That's the only requirement, and the script is going to do the rest of the work for you. So this is the method I prefer. Uh, the first method does work, but it's just, you know, it, it requires a little more maintenance, and you have to be more careful with it. And if you add a new enemy, that means you're going to have to remember to go to the script and update the, the total count that you're, that you're checking against. And... You're also going to have to remember to give that enemy the script that it executes. So it's just going to be more work. And for uh, the least work, uh, I definitely recommend this method. And I think this is the one that's the most efficient. So anyways, that sort of concludes the tutorial. I uh, hope I didn't confuse you guys too much. I don't think I gave a great explanation of this while loop, but I hope I explained it well enough for you to not confuse you. Uh, if you're confused about the loops or anything like that, I do have earlier... Uh, tutorials in this uh, ACS scripting series that go over loops just in case you haven't watched those yet but uh, I believe that just about covers everything if you guys have any other questions about this or about enemy death events or scripts or anything else feel free to ask in the comment section below thank you all for watching this is Chubbs signing out